please welcome Miley Cyrus. Thank you. All right. What an epic night to be a part of. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to start off this induction with the first time I wanted to have sex with Joan Jett. And uh, we were doing Oprah together, and I go up to Joan's hotel room, and Joan opens the door, and I come in, and Kenny Laguna is laying in bed. And I don't know what the fuck is going on. There are, there's towels shoved underneath all the door cracks, shower caps around all the smoke detectors. Joan is running around spraying orange smell cleaner to mask the spell of the, of the pot, that's what you guys call it. And uh, we go into her bathroom, and um, the show was where new artists got to perform with their idols, and, and I wanted to perform with Joan, of, of course. And um, we were in her bathroom, and we were smoking, and we were just talking. And this was one of the moments in my life where I wanted to be as present and absorb everything that she said to me. I listened to her talk about her days with the Runaways. She talked about music. She talked about why she loves animals and she doesn't want to eat them. We're not going to eat the animals. And um, I was getting to have this moment with someone that to me is superwoman. What superwoman really should be. And at first, having this honor to induct Joan Jett into the legendary Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it was overwhelming. There was so much that I could say and she has had a life in music that is rare. She's had a career decades long. She's been the first to do many things, and not just as a woman, but just as a badass being on the planet. But this one story, this one story is my favorite. So on one trip, Joan went to entertain the troops in Turkey and the Middle East, and Joan was traveling with the Secretary of Air Force, and Joan had requested a trip to Jerusalem while she was playing on the USS Bataan in the harbor of Haifa. And not acquainted with the culture and all covered up in jackets. It was a cold day and she was looking kind of androgynous. Joan accepted a yarmulke from one of the guards and she went over to the men's side of the wailing wall to make a prayer. And just as Joan noticed a bunch of other women at another part of the wall, Joan's Israeli colonel assigned to the trip appeared freaking out and screaming at Kenny, international incident. And uh, the American Marines watching this were getting ready to protect Joan from the Orthodox worshipers who would try to exact retribution if they knew about the transgression. So everyone agreed to never speak about this, sorry, to anyone, <laughs> and uh, swore that Joan was the only woman to ever stick a prayer in the men's side of the Wailing Wall since Israel was a nation, and maybe even centuries before that. Fucking badass. But. She was also the first major, major female artist to start her own record label, and that's only because all the other labels said that there wasn't a market for that kind of music. And Kenny Laguna, I want to say something to you. I want to say that you're a fucking genius, and this is why. Because when 23 record labels were saying no, you started Blackheart Records together with Joan, by the way, using his daughter's college savings, selling records out of the back of your Cadillac, and it takes someone like you that believes in the music, but more than that, believes in us as people and as human beings. And you two are an unconventional and unconditional kind of love. And what you guys have is what all of us should look for in the people that we spend our lives and our valuable time here on the earth with. People in this room are probably married to people they love less than you guys love each other. And uh, I'm honored to be a part of your life. I'm also honored to induct the Blackhearts tonight, Lee Crystal, Ricky Bird, and Gary Ryan. And um, so I want to bring everyone up right now, but I do want to say one final story about when I knew that I loved Joan so fucking much. And um, this shit kind of fucks me up because this was a day that she was dedicating her time to an upcoming project for my foundation and it was supporting the LGBT homeless youth. She was running around my backyard. She was with my dogs, playing with my pig. And I played the Tibetan bowls for her and at sunset, and Kenny and Joan, they sang along with these bowls. 
And this relationship seems so different than the one only five or six years ago smoking pot in Oprah's bathroom or wherever the fuck we were at a hotel. Oprah was paying for it. It wasn't her bathroom, but she paid for it. And um, I, now, I now looked at her less of a deity, but now I have this connection. And I have this connection with her that she can be a guide for me. And growing up, my dad always kept me around music, and I spent a lot of time with all different artists. But I don't think, I know there isn't one other person on this planet that's been an inspiration to me like you have. And um, Joan's music, her activism, who she is. And in all of our lives, all of us will experience people who are gonna try to tell us who to be and what to be. Fuck those people. Joan has been an example of what you can achieve and the happiness, which is more important that you can have. If instead of changing for other people, if you don't like how the world is, change it yourself. She made the world evolve. Her life and her success is proof that we can't stop evolving. And I wanna thank you for fighting for our freedom, Joan, and I love you so much. And it really is my honor to be the one inducting you and the Black Hearts into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Get up here, come on. Yeah.